Hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, Lindsay and John, are you with us this evening? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Absolutely. Great, great. Great to have you. Uh, hello, everyone at home. Uh, we're going to get started here with the webinar here shortly. We'd like to give a, a couple minutes here at the beginning just for all the stragglers to, to get into the session. Um, while we're uh, waiting, uh, you'll notice on the right-hand side there's a control panel on your screen. If you want to type into the questions box where you are tuning in from, we can give you guys a, a, a shout-out for your respective city. Uh, John, how are things in Portland this evening? Well, it's fall. It's uh, it's getting cooler. Everybody's ready for Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, the weather is starting to – it's that time of year when I start thinking, hey, you know, it might be a good time to uh, – Go teach English in Costa Rica or Thailand or uh, you know, some other war, <laughs> warm weather had, climate, uh, but uh, it's fantastic. How about uh, how about yourself? And how well, about the you? Midwest has definitely reached that point. We were there a couple weeks ago, <laughs> so <laughs> let's see where everyone's calling in from. All right, we've got Bozeman, Montana, probably some good skiing in Bozeman already. Uh, Hawaii, Charlotte, North Carolina, Fort Collins, Colorado, Milwaukee. Uh, we've got Crystal in Seattle, uh, Akeem in New York City. Um, all right, so we got people from all over the world. Frankfurt, Illinois, Philly. Lindsay, you went to school in Philly. Temple University, proud. There you go, right? Santa Barbara, California. we got somebody from Folsom, California, Mobile, Alabama, all over the country. So this is fantastic. Um, well, I think it's uh, a little past now. I think uh, everyone who's going to make their way in here shortly, we can probably get things started, shall we? Sounds, Sounds good. good. Let's do it. All right. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, over the next hour or so, we'll be discussing uh, all aspects of teaching English abroad. We'll be discussing why people teach abroad, why so many schools want to hire uh, you as an English teacher, even if you don't have a, a background or experience in education or even a uh, – a college degree. Uh, we'll talk about job markets, opportunities in different countries and regions around the world, and you know what we do at International TEFL Academy in terms of providing you with the training and job placement assistance uh, and all the support and guidance you need to realize your own dreams uh, of teaching abroad and, and living and traveling overseas. That's right, Job and John, and uh, the webinar uh, that you guys are attending tonight, it's going to be taped, and we'll send it out in an email after we're done this evening. Uh, please feel free to use the, uh, the text chat box in the right-hand corner. Some of you typed in uh, your cities earlier. Um, text your questions, and Lindsay is going to do her best throughout the duration of the we webinar to, to answer them. Um, all of these questions will be forwarded to your respective advisor, uh, so you can talk with them one-on-one -on -one afterwards. And if you don't have an advisor, you'll definitely be assigned one after the webinar. And uh, if we don't get to your questions uh, during the webinar, we may have some time at the end, and then also you'll be able to follow up uh, tomorrow or the day after with, with your advisor. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, we have a great FAQ section with literally hundreds of FAQs and articles on our website. Uh, you can find a lot of answers to your questions there. Uh, but in any case, uh, again, we're glad to have you all this evening. Uh, there are three of us on the team this evening. Uh, my name is John. I'm an, an advisor at International TEFL Academy. I'm um, originally from Southern California, but I actually grew up in Cairo, Egypt, which was actually uh, absolutely fantastic. I uh, had opportunities to travel to about 50 countries growing up, and uh, I've worked in uh, travel journalism and educational travel for, uh, for about 20 years uh, and the last six years um, helping people teach English abroad. So it's great to be with everybody this evening. And uh, Lindsay, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about yourself? Hey, I'm Lindsay. I'm tuning in here from New York. Um, over here on the East Coast, everyone's bracing themselves for another winter storm <laughs> just in time for the holidays. Um, yeah, well, my background as well, I've traveled extensively. I actually have my master's in education and taught for quite a while. I've um, done some environmental work and volunteer work in Japan, Iceland, Czech Republic, South Africa. Um, yeah, and I've been working here as admissions advisor, International TEFL Academy, for around three years now, and I thoroughly love helping students go abroad. So I'll be um, assisting and helping everyone with their questions this evening, and typing back questions as you type them in, okay? Welcome, everybody. 
Thanks, Lindsay. And uh, hi, everybody. My name is Ian. I'm the director of admissions here at International TEFL Academy. I have been working in the world of TEFL for just over six years now. I grew up in a small town uh, in Michigan, America's High Five on the great uh, Lake Michigan over there. And uh, I've had a, a passion for travel from an early age. I've uh, spent time in uh, about 20 different countries throughout Europe, Latin America, Asia, um, all over the place. And so um, I'm really excited to be here this evening to help uh, you all realize your dreams of teaching abroad. So, uh, yeah, let's get going. Yeah, here's a quick overview of what we'll be covering this evening. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit about who we are at International TEFL Academy. Uh, we'll discuss job opportunities and regional markets. Uh, we'll go over uh, different countries and so forth, and also TEFL certification, uh, job placements, assistance, and so forth. And hopefully at the end, we'll have some additional uh, time for questions and answers as well. So uh, here at International TEFL Academy, uh, basically we train people to teach English as a foreign language, uh, help them find positions around the world. All of our staff have lived, worked, or traveled abroad extensively. I think altogether we've been to about 100 countries. Uh, here are some of us, uh, advisors, job placement advisors, um, and so forth. Uh, we also have about 20 professors on staff. They all possess master's degrees and PhDs in TESOL, linguistics. Um, and they also possess years, if not decades, uh, of experience teaching abroad. So everybody here uh, loves travel, loves the international experience, and we want to help make it a reality for all of you. That's right, John. And uh, our world headquarters, just for you, those of you at home uh, know, is located in the great city of Chicago, the coldest place on earth in the month of February. We have excellent basketball teams and terrible baseball and football teams. But uh, we also have a classrooms uh, all over the world uh, where you can complete your TEFL certification and training. That's right, Ian. Um, and here's some just some pictures of our uh, classroom facilities in Chicago. Uh, all of our classes, in-person classes, we maintain very small class sizes. All of these classes are highly interactive. Uh, they all incorporate live practice teaching, so um, working with actual ESL students as part of your training is a critical part of preparing to go abroad and teach English overseas. And you know, it's just great to be able to meet and interact with other people like yourself who are looking to really go on abroad on the you know the international adventure of a lifetime, whether it's you know living or teaching in Asia, or Europe, and the Middle East. Um, and so that's a great part of the class as well. And you know, Ian, that's also part of the online class. That class is also interactive uh, and provides uh, various ways for people to get together and you know exchange plans and stories and so forth. Absolutely, and we will definitely be getting into the different class options later in the presentation. Uh, but for those of you who are in and around the Midwest, maybe you guys are stopping through O'Hare, you know, somewhere else, and you have a long layover or something. If you ever happen to be in Chicago, please come in and check us out. Uh, take a look at our travel photos. Check out the course that's in session at the time, and get motivated. We got lots of fun travel stories and weird masks and tchotchkes you can look at. Um, so we always have visitors uh, coming in, and we definitely uh, invite you. That's right. And again, here at International TEFL Academy, we offer professional accredited uh, training courses for TEFL, which stands for Teaching English as a Foreign Language. And we also provide a lifetime comprehensive job placement assistance to all of our students and graduates. And uh, all of our courses, whether they are on site, like our location here in Chicago, Nicaragua, Barcelona, wherever it may be, um, or our online class, uh, they're all fully accredited and go beyond international standards for TEFL certification. Uh, we'll be on. Uh, we'll be expanding uh, on this a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but first, Lindsay is going to open up a poll for those of you at home. We want to know: Do you know anybody who's taught abroad? Yes or no? John, what about you? Before you started working for ITA, did you know somebody? Well, I grew up overseas uh, in Egypt, as I mentioned, and I, you know, I went to a school where there were a lot of ESL classes. I knew people growing up who were who were English teachers, and so I was well aware that it's a great way to get out, see the world, uh, get great professional experience. You can even make a career out of it, um, and you're providing a service to people around the world who need and want to learn English. Excellent. All right. Lindsay, closing the poll out. What are those results? 
Close the poll out, and we have around 60% of our attendees tonight know somebody who's taught English abroad. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. The more people you know, the more um, you know, confident you are about you know talking to friends and family about it and telling, hey, Uncle Jim went and did this, or cousin Scott. So it's fantastic. Um, yeah, so 60% know somebody who's taught English abroad. Excellent. And you know, That's those great. of you who don't know somebody, maybe you will be that person that somebody in the future knows. That's right. You know, and question always comes up, guys, where people are wondering, hey, I've heard about teaching English abroad. Is this something that I can do? Maybe you don't have a background in education or you don't even have a college degree. And the answer is yes. Um, people, we train about 2,000 people a year to teach English abroad. Uh, our students and graduates range in age from 18 years old to uh, people in their 70s. Uh, I'd say we have a lot of college students, a lot of recent college graduates, but at the same time we have retirees, uh, people looking for a career break, maybe in their 30s or 40s. Uh, we get people coming in and out of the Peace Corps, the military, who are looking to go, uh, you know, get back abroad. Um, and I think, Ian, you know, I've about 50% of our students have never left their home country before going abroad to teach English. So uh, this provides a great way for you to, you know, begin your international adventures and 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 go overseas and, and make it happen. That I could not agree more with, John. So that's fantastic. So uh, let's cover some of the benefits of teaching English abroad. You know, like why would you want to actually pursue doing something like this? So um, here are just some of the many things that you can kind of expect when you're teaching abroad. First and foremost, it's an easy and affordable way to travel the world. You know, people always ask uh, myself and, you know, my colleagues, how do you guys afford to do this? Well, this is one of the answers that we have. Um, you know, one of the big things also, you get to live life as a local. You're not just a tourist. You're not a student. You're not just stopping by for a week or two, you're really digging in, you're really experiencing uh, that city within that country. Um, there's definitely some serious financial benefits uh, in certain parts of the world, including a free round trip airfare, free housing, paid vacation, health benefits, year end bonuses, and uh, again, the opportunity to travel. Uh, but I think the biggest thing for you guys at home, the biggest perk, the biggest benefit is you get paid to live overseas. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, and one reason, you know, people always ask, hey, why are there so many jobs? Why are there so many people learning English? Why do they want me to teach them English? Um, the bottom line is English is the international language of commerce and culture. It's the second language or the common language that people use when they're speaking to people from other countries or other linguistic backgrounds. Uh, and for literally hundreds of millions, if not billions of people around the world, Learning English opens doors. Uh, it enhances their educational and professional opportunities. Um, and so it's something that they really need and want to do to get ahead in life. Yeah, so some of you at home to kind of better understand all this, let's give an example. So let's say you are an auto parts store in Japan and you need to order some parts from a German manufacturer. Well, the shop owner isn't going to call up their associate in Germany and speak in German. And the associate in, Jap uh, in Germany most likely doesn't speak Japanese. Instead, they're going to communicate in English. English is the international language of business. Um, uh, commonly known as the lingua franca of the world. And so uh, this is a huge demand for business, education, aviation, medicine, something like 80% of the internet is in English. And so uh, those of you at home, you are in high demand. That's right. And, you know, just some statistics about all of this. Uh, according to the British Council, which is the lighter, largest provider of English language classes in the world, there are 1.5 billion people learning English globally, uh, 300 million in China alone. So what that translates into is about 300,000 jobs for English speakers to go abroad and teach English. I consider that estimate to be conservative. I wouldn't be surprised if it's twice that. Um, and if you look in, say, a phone book in Madrid or any other major city in Europe or South America, you're going to find listings for literally dozens, if not hundreds, of language schools. Uh, in Asia, those numbers are going to be even higher. And most of those schools are employing anywhere from 5 to 10 up to 50 English teachers. So when you multiply that out, that means there are literally thousands of teaching opportunities in each major city 
uh, around the world. So if you're an English speaker, you possess a skill that is in demand in literally more than 100 countries around the globe, um, from Spain to Russia to Costa Rica to Saudi Arabia to Argentina. It just goes on and on. And for those of you at home who don't know what a phone book is, John, uh, that's uh, something that we used to use in the 80s and 90s to look people's phone numbers up. So I don't know that's if right. this <laughs> So what does this all uh, turn out to be? Well, this door is a very good representation of uh, what this industry is, and that is a, a revolving door because about 50% of the English teachers who go abroad typically return home or move on to a new country every single year. So that means schools are usually looking to hire about 50% of their staff every single year. So for those of you at home looking to go overseas, this is great for you because there's all types of new opportunities waiting for you all over the world. That's right. Schools are constantly in need of recruiting new, uh, new teachers. And what that means, Ian, there are literally more than 150,000 new positions opening up every year. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there are 50,000 new positions in China alone. So uh, there are just oodles of opportunities for um, folks like all of you at home, uh, no matter what your background is. Um, and again, we're here to sort of sort out those opportunities and talk about them uh, right now. That's a very good point, John. And uh, so let's start off with, you know, who can I teach? Um, you can help shape the lives of a, a child as young as a kindergarten age, up to helping adults and business professionals achieve, achieve their next level of English proficiency. If you look at the photos here, a couple of our alumni, Thomas, uh, he's teaching children in uh, Cambodia. Uh, he's very warm, hence the, uh, the shorts and the tank top, where uh, Lisa, she's currently working in Thailand working with business professionals. And so uh, whether you want to work from the from a child all the way up, um, you really have all the options uh, overseas. That's right. And there are all sorts of different educational uh, venues and institutions looking to employ English teachers. Um, the, the most common employers are going to be private language centers. These are typically private language uh, schools that specialize in language instruction. Very often they cater to adults, so there's certainly many of them also give lessons to children. Uh, in some countries like Spain, France, Korea, Japan, uh, there are also opportunities to teach uh, children in government or public schools as we call them in the U.S. And then, you know, there are other opportunities as well. A lot of teachers engage in private tutoring. Uh, there are summer camp opportunities in some countries. Um, so there are any number of places where you can work as an English teacher abroad. Yeah, so some of you are probably wondering, what does a typical work week look like? Um, typically, you can expect four to five classes a day, uh, 45 minutes to an hour for each class uh, spread out throughout the day, uh, which typically works out to be about 20 to 25 hours of, of teaching per week. Um, now, some of you may say, well, that's, that doesn't sound like very much. You also have to factor in the typically between eight to 10 hours of lesson planning and prep time that you have to do. Now, uh, like any job, obviously the first you know month or two, you're going to spend more time kind of learning the ropes where uh, by the end of your contract, you're going to be really kind of in the flow of things and, and used to things and maybe have to do a little bit less prep time. But still, it, you know, it's full time, but it's not quite the grind that you're used to here uh, in the United States. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, a huge question that comes up when people are looking into teaching abroad is, hey, where am I going to live if I'm teaching English in Madrid or Tokyo or, or Bangkok? Um, and here are some actual examples of uh, different uh, living arrangements for some of our alumni. Uh, can't guarantee that you're necessarily going to have a swimming pool, but, you know, <laughs> typically English teachers abroad are living in, uh, <laughs> you know, middle-class apartments, living in typical middle-class, you know, local neighborhoods. Um, very often English teachers will share apartments with other English teachers. Many will share with, let's say, other expatriates or, or locals. Um, in some countries, schools are going to provide you with housing, but that's not always going to be the case. So um, when you're, you know, going abroad to teach, don't fret. Uh, you're going to have access to a lot of resources to help you find uh, living arrangements, even if you don't speak the local language. They're typically going to be, you know, great online resources. Uh, very often, your employer is going to be able to assist you with finding a place to live. And then, again, word of mouth. So, uh, as we mentioned earlier, people are always coming and going in this field, and so you know, it's very typical to find somebody, you know, another English teacher who's looking to share an apartment or or something like that. So, wherever you teach, don't fret. Uh, you're not going to be going homeless. 
That's right. Maybe you'll find a roommate who will share a giant bottle of Tabasco with you. That's <laughs> right. my, my kind of roommate. Um, okay, so why would anyone want me to teach them English? Some of you may be asking. So let's take a look. Uh, in case of a fire, you probably don't want to reach for a hand grenade. Um, I have some pretty eccentric friends. Not too many have a pet octopi. Um, I'm a cat lover. I have a couple of cats. Never feed this to my cat, um, at least if I want to get any sleep at night. And then this isn't exactly what I, what uh, Bill Gates was thinking when he started his his company back in the day. So you know, these are some obviously some humorous examples, but these are real pictures that you will find in your travels abroad. So employers want you basically because you are the model and your students will want to talk like you, sound like you and have your accent. Uh, you will bring English into context for them along with your culture and enthusiasm. Uh, the majority of schools abroad use the full immersion method, which means you will be speaking English and English only at all times during class. So a lot of you may be asking, do I need to know the native language? Uh, you know, what kind of language proficiency do I, do I need? Uh, you actually won't be using any language in the classroom other than English. And your school director will be very adamant about that because that's the best way to learn a second language. It's the same reason why if you want to learn Spanish, you should go move to Chile, you know, to immer immerse yourself in the language. And so uh, for those of you who don't have, speak any other languages, not to worry, you can still absolutely teach English abroad. Yeah, definitely. Um, and your responsibilities as an English teacher, you're going to be like, you know, a typical language instructor. Uh, you're going to be teaching the cornerstones of language, uh, learning and acquisition, reading, writing, speaking, listening, vocabulary, grammar. Um, conversational English is a huge deal in most places around the people world. People want to be able to uh, hold a conversation in English and learn how to speak English at its natural speed, like native spe speakers. So again, uh, you as a native speaker will serve as a model. And uh, here are just some of the tools and techniques you will come to master with your TEFL training through International TEFL Academy. Uh, lesson planning, so you can create materials for any type of student that you may encounter. Uh, error correction types, so to best correct an error while still encouraging your student to participate in the class. Um, you'll learn how to use visual aids to enhance your effectiveness, uh, all the way to how to set up the actual physical classroom environment that best caters toward your different types of students and the different types of lessons that you are teaching. Exactly. So, all right, let's get to, let's get to the good stuff. So I know a lot of you are wondering, hey, where can I teach? Um, and the bottom line is, if you're an English speaker, you get a TEFL certification, you're going to have a ton of options. Um, and so over the next, uh, you know, a few minutes and slides, we'll be discussing uh, teaching English in different regions of the world, uh, what it entails, what are the requirements, and how it all works. So before we get into everything, we're going to have Lindsay launch another poll, and we want to know, for those of you at home, where do you want to teach? Let us know. Uh, do you want to go to Europe, spend some time in Italy or Spain, Latin America, maybe down in uh, Costa Rica or Argentina, Asia, maybe Thai food is your thing and you really want to get the real deal or, or the Middle East. Maybe you're, you're in tune with Arabic culture and you want to study Islam. All of these great places. John, where would you go if you had to leave tomorrow? You know, it's a hard choice. Uh, I think Japan, I think Turkey, uh, maybe a place like Chile. Um, you know, there's just so many great options. Um, but, you know, I always, I always enjoy the Middle East and Asia uh, in particular. Winter is coming, as uh, George R. R. Martin put it best, and so I'm definitely thinking someplace uh, in Central America. But, Lindsay, uh, why don't you share those uh, results with us and let us know what those of at home are, are thinking. Okay, so our poll results show that 34% of our attendees would like to teach in Asia, 27% in Europe, 21% in Latin America, 15% anywhere, um, and 4% the Middle East. So, um, yeah, definitely Europe and Asia are always typically big hot spots for teaching English abroad. You know, I really enjoy those who are kind of up for anything, though, Lindsay, like all of the above. That's that's the box that I typically check because I'm ready to go anywhere. So we're definitely going to get into the, to this and maybe uh, someplace will pique your attention that you weren't normally considering. 
So uh, here's kind of what we're going to go over as you begin choosing your adventure. Uh, here are some of the job market basic key points that will help you focus in on some of your highest priority destinations and discover those that may be a great fit that, like I mentioned, maybe you didn't consider previously. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, interviews, how you get a job the different visa requirements. For those of you who have traveled abroad, this is something you're probably familiar with. Uh, whether or not you need a four-year college degree or can you work without one. Um, the different uh, positions, you know, private, public, things like that. Um, hiring season. This is really important. You know, when do jobs start? When should I expect to be abroad? Um, obviously, money. Very important thing to talk about. Uh, not only how much you're going to make, but typically, you know, what it takes to transition abroad. Uh, and then also the different contract lengths that you should expect as an English teacher overseas. That's right. So um, one critical aspect that you're going to want to look at when you're researching country options are interviews. So um, interview procedures are going to vary from country to country, school to school. Um, there's some countries where schools are going to want to interview you locally face to face. So if you want to teach English in Argentina, for example, you're going down there during a hiring season, you're meeting school directors face to face. Typically, uh, you're meeting with, uh, you know, two dozen uh, different schools, you get several job offers and you begin teaching more or less right away um, within you know, typically a week or two. Uh, in other countries, schools like to interview you, line up everything in advance. So they can interview you from your home in you know, Wisconsin or New York or wherever it is you, you, uh, you live, you're interviewing on the phone by Skype. Uh, you sign a contract in advance, you have everything sort of set up before you go overseas. So. Uh, when you're looking at your options, again, um, this is something you want to look into and speak to your advisor about. Absolutely. And, you know, for some of you who are a little bit older like me, if you remember a show called The Real World where you had to submit a video of yourself, some employers actually do that as well. They expect you to send a video of yourself, you know, going through a lesson plan. So all different ways to, to secure a job. Um, and so the next thing we want to talk about is uh, the visa that you will use to work. Uh, employers in some countries will provide you with a work visa, work permit, residency permit, um, while so other countries uh, will simply have you work on a student visa or uh, on a tourist visa. We'll kind of explain uh, country by country, region by region, how this works. Um, for more detailed questions, because I'm sure a lot of you will probably want to know for the specific country you want to go to, definitely talk with your advisor uh, after the webinar uh, sometime later this week, and they'll be more than happy to kind of go into the detail uh, with you about the visa laws in whatever country you're looking to go to. That's right. Uh, another critical matter, uh, degree requirement. So there's some countries in the world, United Arab Emirates, South Korea, where it's basically a, a legal requirement that you possess a four-year degree. Uh, in addition to a TEFL certification. Um, in other countries, no degree required. So even if you don't have a college degree and this is something you want to do, uh, you get a TEFL certification, you're going to have options. Yeah, so you remember the types of school slide that we went over earlier. Uh, that's something you may want to consider, you know, is your working environment. Would you like to work in a public school setting where you are the English teacher uh, or a private school where you can be one of up to, let's say, 30 different English teachers there doing things just like you? Um, also, do you want to help people uh, and make money as a private tutor? This is a really common way to kind of make a little bit of extra travel uh, fund uh, when you are teaching, especially in parts of the world like Europe and Latin. America. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> hiring seasons, as Ian mentioned, this is critical. Uh, so in some countries, schools hire uh, seasonally and cyclically during particular times of the year. So in Europe, for example, uh, the big hiring season is typically in September, maybe into October in a place like Spain. Uh, they hire again in January. Um, in other parts of the world, like East Asia, there are just so many jobs that uh, demand is so high that schools are hiring all the time, uh, and you need to be aware, you know, not every school is following a traditional academic calendar as we think of it here in the U.S. or Canada. So um, jobs are opening up in different parts of the world at different times of year, uh, and that's something you definitely want to consider when you're looking at your, con your, your, uh, your timeline and your calendar. Um, but regardless of where you look to teach, uh, there are going to be a series of steps and there's going to be a process when it comes to getting your TEFL certification, uh, planning your job search, 
putting together, you know, documents you need to get visas and so forth. Uh, so regardless of where you're looking to teach, typically you want to count on the process of beginning your TEFL certification, beginning your job search, uh, lining up a job, and then actually heading abroad. It's typically a three to six month process, sometimes even longer. So if, for example, you're looking to teach abroad, let's say uh, in the spring or summer of 2015, now is the time to get started with the whole process because while you're going to be able to get a job, the process is just going to take some, some time and planning. Absolutely, John. And so for those of you at home who are looking to go sooner than later, it's still possible, but obviously it is going to take some preparation. And for those of you who studied abroad, you probably, you know, registered and got everything squared away 10, 12 months in advance. So it's not something that you want to just say, oh, I want to be abroad December 1st. Well, okay, it's going to take a little time. All right. Um, so one of the most useful things that we can actually send you, and Lindsay's actually going to copy and paste this into the chat pane. It's going to show up in your home here in a second is our country chart. And basically what this is, it's a spreadsheet um, and it lists the most popular destinations and provides an overview of the TEFL market. So um, hold off, you know, obviously to, to go to the website right away uh, until maybe after the presentation. But this is definitely something that's super, super useful. Degree requirements, contract like hiring season, visa, uh, you know, salaries, all of that is listed right here. And then obviously, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to specific questions, you're going to want to talk with your advisor. Definitely. And money is definitely something <laughs> you're probably going to want to talk to your advisor about because, you know, it's just uh, a reality that you know, finances are a consideration for all of us. So um, the good news is your TEFL certification is geared for full-time paid employment abroad. Um, almost anywhere that you go and teach, you're going to be making enough money to live comfortably based on the local cost of living. Uh, you're going to be able to cover your expenses, go out on the weekends, you know, take Spanish lessons or tango lessons or, you know, whatever it is. Um, in a lot of countries, you're basically going to break even financially, meaning that you're, you're going to, cover your expenses and enjoy life, but you may not be putting substantial sums of money in the bank every month. Um, that said, there are definitely countries where you can get paid and receive great benefits. Um, you know, in a place like South Korea, many English teachers are saving $1,000 a month and receiving benefits like free, free housing. So um, talk to your advisor about options. I know a lot of you have, you know, student loans or other financial considerations that you need to address. So um, again, talk to your advisor about your options and how to make it work and, and so forth. Yeah. And so another thing to think about is contracts. Are you interested in doing a typical 10 to 12 month contract or are you looking for a shorter term job, maybe three to six months? Uh, are you like many of us who <laughs> want to spend a year abroad and one or multiple countries? This is super, super common around here. Uh, many of my colleagues and friends and former students have done this. You know, you go spend one contract length, let's say in Spain, you love Spain, but you visited Prague on the weekend once and you fell in love. And next thing you know, you're moving to Prague next fall. Okay. That's totally normal. Not only is that regular, uh, as we talked about earlier with the revolving door, there's always these job opportunities. And as a graduate of International Temple Academy, uh, which we're going to talk about in the future, the job guidance, the assistance that we provide you to help you find a job, that's a free lifetime service. And so we'll talk about that a little bit in the future. But if you are like some of us who just kind of want to go to as many places as possible, that's definitely a reality. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've worked with some people who've been to a half, you know, taught in a half dozen different countries. Um, but in any case, when you're looking at your options, you're going to, you know, in all likelihood, when you're going to need to balance your, your needs and your wants. Uh, you're going to want to think about a whole bunch of different considerations. Is there a particular language that you want to learn? Uh, do you have student loan payments that you need to make every month? So you need to go someplace where you can save, you know, save extra money uh, with each paycheck. Um, do you really want to live in a country with a warm tropical climate or do you prefer to live in uh, you know, some place like maybe Japan, which has, you know, beautiful spring, beautiful fall, and then, you know, winter and summer. Um, lots of matters to consider. I always recommend, and I know Ian and Lindsay do, do as well, be as flexible as possible and open yourself up to as many different opportunities because there are literally a thousand places around the world where you can go and have a terrific experience. That's right, John. I mean, we have graduates and working in 80 different countries alone, you know, and so there's, there's jobs everywhere. Uh, but let's dive in um, and start talking about some of these job places, um, starting, starting with Europe. 
Um, so in no particular order, uh, these are some of the best job markets in Europe uh, that we have graduates working. Uh, Germany, Turkey, Russia, the Czech Republic, Italy, Spain, um, really anywhere. And, you know, those aren't ranked, but those are, you know, obviously great places to go. Um, and for those of you at home, did you know, Istanbul, uh, the largest city in Turkey by population, is the only city in the world uh, which is built on two continents. There's a, literally a bridge that goes from the Asia side to the Europe side. And so if you're looking for that melting pot of culture, that's definitely going to be Turkey. You know, you have the European influence, you have the Asian influence, you have the Islamic influence. It's a really awesome place uh, to go. Uh, for those of you whose advisor is John, he can talk for days about how awesome Turkey is. So, um, yeah, let's look at a, a little bit more here. That's right. You know, Turkey is fantastic. I def definitely recommend that you, uh, you all consider it. But the bottom line, Ian, the job market for English teachers across Europe is booming uh, with the emergence of the European Union and just, you know, ever increasing uh, trade and commerce and uh, people working and engaging in education across state line, you know, government borders and so forth. Um, English has really become the second language throughout the continent of Europe. Um, it's a huge deal. Loads of people are looking to learn English. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, a variety of, of options and, and so forth, um, you know, but in Europe, things are going to vary from country to country. So uh, visas in Czech Republic are going to be different than the visa situation in Spain. So it's critical that, again, you talk to your advisor about specific countries op country options that you're considering. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about the jobs and how everything works. So interviews in Western Europe are typically done in country with the expectation of starting your teaching job right away. It's very common to interview for a job on Monday and be teaching on Wednesday. Okay, it's an immediate turnaround. Um, you can find some in advance interviews more towards Central and Eastern Europe, but if you're looking at going to a country like Spain or Italy or something like that, definitely expect to interview face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, most Americans working in Western Europe will do so on a tourist visa or a student visa. Um, Germany, the Czech Republic, Turkey, Russia, these are places where you can get uh, work visas. Also, a lot of places in Eastern Europe provide work visas. There's different, you know, uh, residency permits, working visas, things like that that you can apply for. And I really can't stress this enough. When it comes to your specific country, whether it's Spain, whether it's Germany, wherever it may be, uh, talk with your advisor about the specifics for that country because we definitely want to give you all the detailed information uh, before you, you get on that plane and go. That's right. We could spend days talking about this sort of thing. But uh, in, any, in any case, um, when it comes to de degree requirements for teaching English in Europe, uh, it's not a legal requirement typically, though certainly many schools look to hire English teachers who possess uh, a college degree as well as a TEPFL certification. Uh, that said, if you don't have a four-year degree and you get TEFL certified, you can find uh, great teaching opportunities throughout Europe, from Spain to Russia, different parts of Eastern Europe, even Germany. So, um, and there are also um, opportunities to teach uh, children and adults, primarily adults throughout most of Europe, but there are public school options in Spain, France, uh, the Republic of Georgia, if you're looking to work with younger learners. That's right. I was actually just recently in Prague in the Czech Republic, John, and uh, half of the alumni that I met up with uh, were teaching um, both kids and adults. And so it's a pretty good mix over there. Um, so the ideal times to start in Europe are going to be September uh, through October and again in January. And, and these are the peak turnover times for new teachers uh, taking on teaching contracts. Uh, September and October is because, you know, if any of you have ever been to Europe, all Europeans love their summer holiday. They all go vacation. Schools are just closed, okay? And so that's why September is a really big uptick. January kind of has to do with the holidays. People go home for the holiday season, maybe don't come back, right? And so January is a great time to start working as well. Um, there are some parts of the world where you can actually find a job year-round, Russia, Turkey, uh, Georgia as well, typically more in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, that's the case. Um, and then, you know, obviously contract lengths are looking at 10 to 12 months. As I mentioned, July and August, most schools are going to be closed. And so if you start in September, you may work 10, 11 months and then the school closes. If you start in January, you may only be working there, you know, five, six, seven months and then your school will close. Um, 
majority of English teachers are going to break even. Now, I want to stress what breaking even means. Breaking even means you are paying your bills. You have your own apartment. You're traveling on your time off. You're going out. You're really enjoying yourself. But basically, when you come home at the end of the year, you're coming home with the same amount of money that you left with. You know, the typical person is breaking even day to day anyways. And so you're living a very good lifestyle. Um, and you can definitely afford serious uh, travel as well. Uh, traveling around Europe is incredibly affordable. Uh, this past summer, I took a flight from Dublin, Ireland to Oslo, Norway, round trip for my wife, uh, the both of us after tax is like 120 euro. And so it's really, really great place to go and travel as well. So I would highly recommend Europe. Yeah, breaking even doesn't mean you're, you know, living off ramen noodles. Uh, <laughs> Although in Japan, that is, that, is, that is delicious, the delicacy. That's right. Uh, all right, on to Latin America, another fantastic part of the world to work, work and teach English in. Uh, some of the top job markets are going to include Costa Rica, Chile, uh, Argentina, Mexico, Peru, Brazil, uh, Nicaragua. It's sort of the, the hidden gem. Um, but, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, certainly you could throw in a place like Colombia, Ecuador, uh, lots of great um, – Great options when you're looking at Latin America. And Ian, did you know there are 2,484 miles of coastline in Chile alone? So if you like ceviche and you want to learn how to surf, uh, that might be your option. If you like long walks on the beach, that is the <laughs> longest walk on the beach in the world. So there you go. <laughs> Um, all right. So major hiring periods in Central America, we're talking, you know, like uh, Costa Rica, um, Nicaragua, Panama. Uh, they're going to be around February and March and then again in June and July. Uh, Mexico, which is an awesome job market. I really can't stress that enough. Uh, offers actually peak hiring season year round. So really, whenever you make the transition, Mexico is there for you um, throughout the region. Wages are going to be modest, uh, but given the low cost of living, full-time English teachers are definitely able to live very, very comfortably. Uh, with our school in Nicaragua, uh, our on-site directors there say, yeah, you can definitely rent an apartment here for $100, $125 a month, right? And it's just like, that's incredible, you know, coming from Chicago. So um, it's, if you're living with a couple of English teachers, you actually may be able to put a little bit of money aside uh, just for, for regional travel as well. That's right. Um, most interviews for teaching opportunities in Latin America are going to be face-to-face, uh, -face, no pun intended with this photo, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you're typically meeting school directors on the ground in Latin America. That said, uh, there are increasingly more opportunities to interview and line up jobs in advance uh, from home in the U.S. or Canada, uh, countries like Chile, Colombia. Uh, Mexico and and here and there in other countries as well so uh, opportunities to, to interview in advance but certainly most schools are hiring face-to-face -face, uh, locally yeah and many English teachers in uh, Latin America are going to work on a tourist visa and renew it every 90 days by visiting a neighboring country this is what's commonly occur called a border run so for example if you're working in Nicaragua every three months you're gonna have to actually travel to Costa Rica not the end of the world. You know, obviously, it's a pretty cool way to go explore the region. Um, but this is really just standard for Latin America. And it gives you a great excuse to travel. Um, go spend 72 hours in Montevideo, Uruguay. Go back on the ferry. Go back to your job in the Buenos Aires, right? Um, schools typically hire here in the early months. Uh, this is in South America, January to March. And then again in July in English teachers. And much like Central America, uh, you're going to live a very comfortable lifestyle, but you're typically going to to break even. OK, so when you're looking at salaries, yeah, maybe you do make more money in Chile and Santiago than you do in San Jose, Costa Rica. But cost of living is a little bit there. So it's a little bit more. So it's all kind of relative. Uh, that's right. And, you know, the bottom line is Latin America boasts a very robust and fast growing job market for teaching English. Um, you know, certainly there are going to be some schools that prefer to hire teachers who possess a BA. Um, that said, if you don't have a college degree and you want to teach English abroad, Latin America is definitely a part of the world that you should consider. There are loads of opportunities in most countries in the regions for those of you who don't have a degree. Also, if you're not from a native English-speaking country, uh, Latin America is going to have offer more opportunities for you as well. Um, 
as in Europe, you know, certainly a lot of opportunities are going to be teaching business professionals and adults, um, university students, and so forth. That said, there are also opportunities to work with younger learners. Um, many contracts are going to be six to 12 months. Uh, there's some shorter, sort of three month contracts available in places like Peru and and, uh, and so forth. Many English teachers also work as sort of independent contractors. So they're basically, you know, staying in a, in a, in a, in a country for a period of months, uh, but they have more flexibility and they're very often taking on a lot of private students as well. Yeah, there's actually a really great uh, uh, Ministry of Education program going on in Columbia right now, which your advisor can definitely give you a lot of uh, info on if you want to work with kids down in Latin America. So great stuff down there. I definitely I think that's the part of the world where I need to go to come February when Chicago is sub-zero. But let's move on to the next uh, part of the world that has an awesome job market, and that is Asia, the single largest TEFL marketplace in the world. Okay, um, There are more positions to teach English in Asia than there are teachers to fill them. John kind of talked about China earlier. Uh, crazy statistic, there are more students learning English in China than the entire population of the United States. Okay, so kind of a big demand over there. So some of the biggest markets, South Korea, China, Taiwan, Thailand, Japan, Vietnam. One of my personal favorite countries I spent time in in Asia, uh, Malaysia, you know, is just an incredible part of the world. So um, Indonesia as well. There's tons of opportunities over there. And we have to have a little question. Did you know this is the slide that always makes me sad? But Korean pop star Psy, you've probably heard his song Gangnam Style, hit number one on the Billboard charts in 2013. I think what's more impressive about this is the fact that this is the single most viewed YouTube video of all time. Okay, so that just kind of goes to show you uh, the cross culture um, that's going on over in Asia. Yeah, you may not know it, but South uh, South Korea is actually a huge um, center of pop culture, music, soap operas, movies. Uh, they really do it all, and people all over Asia are watching uh, South Korean right. uh, movie and tev television and so forth. Um, you know, Ian, the bottom line is that. Uh, if you want to have a great international experience and you want to make good money and receive benefits and uh, and live in a safe, uh, cosmopolitan, fast-growing part of the world that also possesses literally thousands and thousands of years of history and culture, you got to consider Asia. Uh, it's got by far the biggest job market. It has um, huge, these countries have huge populations, huge middle classes. Uh, education is like religion in a lot of these places. Um, and it's just really created by far the largest job market in the world for teaching English abroad. Um, there are opportunities in virtually all of these countries to work with adults and or children. Um, and demand is so high that schools are hiring year round and you can line up jobs in advance. So uh, just a ton of benefits. It's, you know, obviously the biggest one is actually being able to experience Asia because it's just a fantastic part of the world. The food alone is totally worth it. The food alone. That's <laughs> yeah. what, there's a reason why Tony Bourdain is going to Asia. But Every you know, single day, right. So <laughs> uh, interviews are generally conducted in Asia in advance through email, over the phone, and via Skype. Um, so you can have your job waiting for you before you leave your home country. Pretty nice, right? Uh, so the majority of opportunities will be in private language academies. So schools are up and running the majority of the year, which means year-round hiring. Um, employers typically sponsor you for your work visa as well. So for those of you that have the extra level of convenience, um, having a work visa, having a job in advance, you know, being able to really go whenever your timeline fits it, uh, definitely explore your options in Asia. That's right. And Asia is going to be one part of the world where certainly in most countries uh, a four-year degree is required along with citizenship from a native English-speaking country and a TEFL certification. That said, if you don't have a degree, again, there are going to be options. Uh, China, Cambodia, fantastic countries, fantastic cultures, fantastic cuisine. Um, and um, you're going to have opportunities to work with adults and young learners, although in many countries Primarily young learners are going to be um, what most of the positions uh, entail. For those of you at home that go and work in Asia, do yourself a favor and visit Angkor Wat in Cambodia. It is definitely one of the most amazing places you will absolutely see in your life. Guarantee it.
Okay. Um, all right. So Asia is also an area of the world where you can actually save a great deal of your salary. So for those of you who have student loans or any type of, you know, debt back home, this is definitely a place for you. Uh, for example, and these aren't inflated numbers to get you interested. These are real facts. You can realistically save about a thousand dollars a month in a country like South Korea. That's in addition to getting free airfare and housing, health insurance, paid vacation, all the national holidays off. And so it's really a, an appealing place to go if you're uh, you know, money motivated. Uh, contract lengths are generally 12 months uh, with some six-month opportunities. You may not get as many perks if you do a six-month contract, but they're definitely there. Um, many of you, like many of us, will actually end up staying much longer than that, though. Um, and that's just the draw of this incredibly safe and fascinating part of the world. I mean, I have friends um, that have been teaching English in Asia as long, if not longer, than I've been working in this industry. So that's six, seven years now. And frankly, I, I don't think they're ever coming back. And so um, it's definitely a part of the world where you can easily make a career out of it. Or if you're looking to fund uh, traveling around the world, we have a lot of students that will start in Asia, save up the money, and then go to Europe or then go to Latin America. You know, imagine showing up to Costa Rica with no student loans or showing up with eight or nine thousand dollars in your savings account. It can it can definitely enhance your experience for sure. No doubt. All right. So last but not least, we got the Middle East. Um, some of the top job markets in this part of the world going to include the United Arab Emirates that incorporates uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, uh, Qatar, uh, Kuwait, Turkey. There's certainly other options. Tunisia is fantastic. Um, you know, you got Egypt and so forth. And Ian, did you know Dubai is the fastest growing city in the world? Uh, and apparently you can ride a camel. To house <laughs> it's well. pretty crazy. I saw an animated GIF on the internet the other day of uh, Google Earth, and it was like 10 years of a satellite image over Dubai, and it was just like incredible. It was like one of those uh, seahorses that you put in, it grows under the water or whatever. It was just the expansion was incredible. So definitely a really cool part of the world. So this is kind of what we, uh, ex you know, think of when we're talking about the Middle East stretching from the western shores of North Africa and the eastern Mediterranean of the Persian Gulf. Uh, the Middle East incorporates a pretty broad away array of markets uh, for English teachers. That's right. And the Persian Gulf nations is going to be including nations like the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Um, these are highly prosperous, fast growing, highly modern societies, very Islamic and Arab at the same time. Uh, they tend to be very cosmopolitan. Uh, these job markets offer some of the um, most lucrative job opportunities. Degree requirements, you definitely need to have at least a degree in addition to a TEFL certification. Uh, many opportunities, they're looking to hire folks who have a master's degree or, or a prior, prior experience teaching professionally. Um, that said, you don't have to have prior experience to necessarily get an opportunity. Um, schools are typically going to interview you in advance, line up everything, get your visa set up and so forth. Most contracts are going to be 10 to 12 months, and your visa is going to be sponsored by your employer. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to ski indoors, Dubai is your place. That's always the great. <laughs> so uh, let's look at some other Middle Eastern countries. For those of you who don't know, this is a picture of uh, Petra and Jordan. That's where uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade uh, was filmed. And so uh, I don't think the uh, Ark of the Covenant's there. I think that's what they're looking for. But uh, according to uh, Harrison Ford, that's where it is. But uh, places like Egypt, Morocco, Jordan, they have job markets as well. Um, most of the positions um, in these places – they conduct their interviews face-to-face -face in country, similar to that of Europe or Latin America. Um, outside of the Gulf states where you can secure work visas, uh, EFL teachers should definitely anticipate working on a tourist visa in these areas, much like Latin America, much like Europe. Um, contract lengths also very similar to those regions, uh, typically six to 12 months. I have a really close friend who spent some time in Jordan uh, perfecting his Arabic, so that's a really cool part of the world to, to work in as well. That's right. And, you know, in a lot of these countries, especially 
Um, less developed uh, Arab countries like uh, Jordan, Morocco, Egypt, Lebanon, and so forth. Uh, teachers are breaking even, but in the Persian Gulf countries, uh, English teachers are typically making enough to save $800 to $2,000 a month after expenses, um, receive great benefits as well. Um, you, there are all sorts of teaching opportunities working with different types of students, from you know kindergartens and uh, language uh, primary schools to uh, vocational colleges, uh, teaching business learners and so forth. Um, Schools are hiring year-round in this part of the world, um, though typically the best time of year to be looking for opportunities in the spring and summer leading up to the beginning of the public school year uh, in September and August. Right. All right, so now you know more about where you can go. So here's some more about how we assist you in making this adventure a reality. Uh, in addition to your TEFL advisor, who will help you create the success plan, as I mentioned a million times, talk with them after the, the webinar. Once you're actually enrolled in a TEFL course with International TEFL Academy, you'll be able to work with a job search guidance advisor to prep you for your job hiring process. So we actually have an entire department here, our student affairs department, whose sole job is to assist our our graduates in finding employment. Um, and this assistance includes everything from resume and cover letter of de development to interview preparation and procedures, what you're going to be asked during the interviews, what types of questions you should ask, uh, what a standard contract looks like, visa information, and then obviously the most important thing is providing you the actual contacts and resources necessary for you to, to get the job. So you're going to receive our International Directory of Schools, which is a worldwide language school directory that hosts literally tens of thousands of language schools in it that you can reach out to. Um, you're going to receive our 500-page job search guidance manual. Manual, which details country by country the, the steps and procedures you'll need to take to interview and land a position uh, by each country. Um, you'll gain access to a few hundred online job boards where you'll be able to not only apply for jobs in certain countries, but also have schools and recruiters reach out to you by you posting your resume. And then also we have relationships with some of the top recruiting agencies in the world that work with places like Korea, Taiwan, China, uh, Middle East, places like that. That's right. So you have you know tons of support and guidance. We also have a very vibrant alumni association. So uh, with 2,000 new alumni every year, we have graduates teaching English in 80 countries around the world. Uh, and we've really made an effort to set up really a global community or network of all our students and graduates um, all over the place. So we have alumni-only Facebook. Um, groups, for example, that are country specific. So um, as soon as you enroll in your TEFL class, boom, you have access to these sorts of resources. So if you're interested in teaching English in Spain, hey, you can hop on the uh, alumni or student uh, Facebook group for Spain and talk to people who are teaching there. Ask them questions, uh, set up meetups, uh, get tips for uh, getting jobs or finding a place to live. Um, and we also do all sorts of great activities. We have meetups in different countries. Ian was just in uh, Prague, had a great meetup there. Uh, Lindsay's had some meetups in, in South America and Argentina and Ecuador. Uh, we sponsor all sorts of alumni contests, writing contests, article contests, uh, um, video contests. We're going to publish your blog, any articles you want to write. So um, you're really going to be able to take advantage of all of that and really become part of, again, of a global community of people like yourself who are teaching English abroad. That's right. All, all right. right. <laughs> Ian, you want to take it? or? Sure. Let's talk about some of the standards of TEFL. And we've talked about where you can go and how we help you. Let's talk a little bit about our classes. So um, here are things you need to know about your TEFL training. If you want to find work abroad, you need to make sure that your TEFL training includes these things. At least 100 hours of academic coursework. Okay, very important. Uh, also, at least six hours of student teaching, uh, actual real live teaching with ESL students. Um, you need to be taught by a professional instructor with at least a master's level or higher uh, in the field. And the certification you're taking, the, the TEFL class, needs to be accredited by an internationally known authority. And uh, whether you take one of our many in-person classes all over the world, I think we have like 26 or 27 different locations, or our extremely popular online class, you'll be receiving the same level of quality and education and service. Uh, it's merely a matter of uh, your best fit and preference for the course. Uh, all roads with International Temple Academy lead to gainful employment with reputable employers overseas. 
That's right. So a typical four-week TEFL class, it's going to be like boot camp for English teachers. It's a full-time intensive commitment. You're in class basically from nine to five, five days a week. You have homework. Uh, there are going to be at least 100 hours of coursework, live practice teaching. Uh, you're working in a very interactive, uh, interpersonal uh, environment with highly experienced and educated um, instructors. Again, these classes are accredited. Um, Class sizes are kept small, again, to maintain that interactive learning environment. Uh, these classes are four weeks full time. Again, tuition is going to range from about $1,600 to $2,500, um, depending on where you take the class. And that's not going to include uh, you know, housing and travel and other expenses that um, you may need to incur, especially if you're going to take your TEFL class abroad. Yeah, our world headquarters is here in Chicago, as I mentioned earlier, but we do have classrooms uh, all around the globe where you complete your TEFL certification from San Diego to San Jose to Madrid to Phnom Penh, everywhere in between. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our online class. This is incredibly popular. I would say about 75% of all of our graduates take our course online. And here's kind of a basic overview of it. Um, the curriculum is, con is comprised of 150 hours of academic coursework as well as 20 hours of live practicum teaching. Um, the course is 11 weeks long. And it's basically the equivalent of like a five credit hour college class. So you're looking at about 10 to 12 hours a week, but it is part time. So you can definitely work a full time job, go to school full time while getting certified. Uh, you're being taught by a professional level instructor. All of our professors have at least a master's degree in TESOL. Many of them have PhDs in related fields uh, with both international and domestic teaching experience. And the course is very, very interactive and small. So you have 20 students per, per course section. So it's you and 19 others. And you have peer discussion forums, supplemental video, live webinars, similar to that we're doing right now, um, live office hours that you can chat with your professor. Um, so you really are a part of a course. It's not like you're just kind of off in cyberspace doing your thing, okay? Um, so the student teaching, it's required uh, 20 hours. I'm going to get into that here in a minute. But also at the end, you do have the option to do uh, free bonus modules of uh, working with young learners and business English uh, professionals, but your, prof your, uh, your advisor can kind of explain the details in there. Um, so the st student teaching component, the, the practicum component, um, this is something you're going to do within your own community. Um, we provide assistance with locating ESL classrooms for your practicum, but you'd really be surprised on what you will find by just doing a simple Google search. Um, local community centers, uh, public libraries, faith-based organizations, maybe at your university. If there's international students there, uh, getting some firsthand experience working with ESL students, putting to use the methodologies you're learning in your class, that's what we're looking for. That's right. And there you know, a lot of advantages uh, for taking the class online. Uh, it's definitely the most cost-efficient way to get your certification. Uh, you're typically going to save $500 to $1,000 on uh, tuition alone, not to mention um, travel expenses and accommodations You know, compared to taking a class, say, overseas. Um, so we know that a lot of you do have financial considerations. Uh, the class is part-time. It is designed to accommodate those of you who are working full-time or maybe you're uh, in college or university. Uh, there's, even though it is an interactive class, there's no required live time, so you have the ability to do your work according to your own daily and weekly um, schedule. And you know, one really fantastic op, you know, feature with the online class is that you're receiving job placement assistance while you're taking the class. So while you're taking the class, you can start working with advisors, uh, putting together a timeline and a strategy. You can actually start talking to schools and recruiters. You know, we have students all the time, who, you know, line up jobs before the class is even, uh, have a job lined up before the class is even done. So um, there are a lot of advantages. One other one that I, you know, failed to mention is that um, you're receiving job placement assistance for the entire globe. So you're able to look at opportunities, talk to schools in all different regions of the world. Um, and that really makes the on online class ideal, especially if you're looking to teach in a part of the world like Asia, um, where you're going to be interviewing from home in advance anyway. 
Absolutely. So if you're not totally sold on one place in particular, it's a great option for you. So here's what you guys need to do now. First of all, talk with your advisor. I keep saying it. I sound like a broken record, but LPs just sound better, John. Uh, talk with your advisor, answer your questions, you know, and really get the information you need to, to really set sail on this adventure. Next step, get TEFL certified. This is literally the key to having a job all over the world. I really can't stress that enough. It's so awesome having the certification in your back pocket. It's basically like always having a job waiting for you. Uh, and then finally, the last thing, the most important thing, the reason you tuned in tonight, go teach and see the world. We always like to end on a high note. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Hopefully, uh, we'll see you at one of our alumni meetups overseas sometime soon.